Okay, so my book is done, but Ingram Spark keeps rejecting my book cover. What the hell? Today I'm going to be going over how you can actually use their templates uh, to be able to make sure your book cover is accepted the first time around. Stay tuned. <music> Hi, my name is MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing everything about self-publishing and my journey as a career author with you. Before I get started on today's topic, please be sure to hit like and subscribe. That way uh, more authors like us can find this channel. And today I'm going to be talking to you about dropping your cover art for your book into the template for Ingram Spark. So for the first time I ever submitted a book through Ingram Spark, I kept getting my book kicked back over and over again because of the cover and I was pulling my hair out. I was like, everything is the correct dimensions. I looked at everything in the file creation guide, which I will have links below. Everybody should be looking at the file creation guide first when they're troubleshooting. Um, and I was so frustrated I couldn't get it to work. And finally, I just wrote back to the QA person and said, what is wrong? Like, I'm doing everything you're saying to do. And she was like, have you tried the template? And I was just like, fine, I'll use the template. And it was accepted right away. So ultimately, using their template is my top recommendation to get your book approved in the system if you're having issues. Um, I see a lot of people on different forums saying my book keeps getting kicked back or I don't know you know, why they're not accepting it or what does this error mean? Generally, if you're using their template, um, it's going to be accepted probably the first, maybe even the second time, because you can see the exact bleed lines you need to fill in. You can see where everything needs to fit. Um, an actual human will be reviewing to make sure that everything lines up. So if it looks good to you with human eyes, it's probably going to look good to that human too. Um, it's not just a computer that randomly decides it doesn't work, um, there is a reason why it's getting kicked back to you either in the initial submission phase, if it says there's an issue with the color, the DPI, anything like that, or if it gets kicked back later because it's not lining up. So I'm going to be showing you today how you get the template, how you use the template, and how to save it to align with the Ingram Spark guidelines. All right, so before we get started building our cover, I first need to know what the specs are going to be, right? So I know my book is 236 pages, but I need to figure out, well, how many you know inches is that on the spine? Um, I need to make sure it's formatted correctly. So Ingram Spark actually has this cover template generator for you. I'll have the link below that you can look at. Um, this is super, super helpful. So you put in all the information, put in the ISBN that will be on the template so they can identify it with the correct book. You put in your trim size, you put in your um, color uh, paper, background, if it's gonna be color, what kind of color paper you want. Um, you pick all of your options. And this is super helpful because it's going to send you the exact template that you need for this um, and you fill everything out. Now I always go with the PDF version. I don't have InDesign, I just have Adobe Photoshop. So I always go with the PDF version for that reason. I put in my email address, the price, etc., and I hit submit. Now it usually takes a few minutes, but then the email comes through and this is what the email looks like. So it says Ingram Spark cover template. Um, it gives me the ISBN, it gives me the dimensions that I've provided based on the page length. So that is why it's super important to know your page length. Now at the bottom of this, it is going to have a nice PDF template for me to download and work with. So that is exactly what I would like to do. So I have already looked at this template head here. And so this is telling me all my content needs to fit in this pink space, right? Because as the cover folds over, this could end up, you know, not looking right. Um, this is the bleed. So I know that I need to make a a file here in Photoshop that's going to be the this exact size and actually just a little bit bigger because I have to fill this bleed area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some math and I'm going to create my new file. Create custom. So I want to look at this in inches. So I want something that's 9.5 inches high. Um, so it's going to be a six by nine book, but I like I said, I need that bleed area. Now I know that each of the sides of the book is six inches wide. So a little bit wider than that because I need to fill in the spine. So it needs to be bigger than 12 inches. It needs to be 12.537 inches. And at this point, I know that I'm going to have to have that bleed. So I'm actually just gonna make this 13 inches here.
Okay, so now I have the sizing that I need. So what I wanna do, so I know that it overall 12.537 is the area I'm working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to add these um, uh, guidelines for myself. Vertical. So this first line here is actually gonna show me where my where that bleed is, so from 13 over. So this is gonna show me this first edge of where the bleed's going to be. And then I'm just gonna create another one for the other side. All right, and then now in the middle is where I can start to add in the spine guides. This again is just gonna give me an idea of what I'm working with here now i can obviously do that on the other ends as well um, where i'm going to do horizontally because i know i added about half an inch on each side here So now I, in general, just have this guide that's going to help me as I'm building this in Photoshop. So I always want to build my file in Photoshop originally, and then I'll drop everything into the template. So I have already started to put things on the side here that I know I'm going to need. Don't like that. Okay, so when I originally made the cover for this book, again, I'm just taking it from Amazon only for the print to be under wide distribution. So what I want to do is I... I want to make sure I don't lose the dimensions here, um, but I just want to make sure I can publish it on Ingram Spark. Okay, so as you can see, my name is, is potentially in this bleed area. I don't really like that, um, but I made this years ago. I don't have the original file, so this is kind of what I'm stuck with. Um, so let me see if I can actually fiddle with this a little bit. Um, and get this to be maybe a little bit cleaner. Okay, I like that. Now it's gonna give me a little edge there, um, but it's well within the bleed area. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna add the rest of my cover elements uh, here. Um, I really love this tool because I can just click this color. Okay, boom. All right, so that same color is going to wrap around the sides. That's what I want. Now, when I originally made this cover art um, in KDP, again, I only had the front cover, and I said, oh, KDP has this awesome cover generator. 
And at the time it was awesome because I didn't have any Photoshop skills and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but it just didn't give me all the options that I wanted. And if I'm going back and doing this, I want to go back and do it right. Um, so that's why I'm just taking the time to reset this. Now, this is not a complete cover change. This is the same front cover. It's a slightly different color on the spine and background, but it's going to have the same information about the book on the back. Um, and I'm just adding my nice little logo to the spine. So it is going to be much easier for me to be able to do this than with some of my other projects where I was doing a complete second edition of a book. This is the same edition. It is just getting a slight upgrade because I'm going wide with it. So it's going to look much nicer. Okay, I just need that small for now. And then this guy will come on the back. Uh, that doesn't need to be that big. My ego is not that big. Okay. Okay, and now I can just make this full screen again, make it easier for y'all to see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in here just so I can place my little logo where I would like it to go. So what I'm going through as I am taking my print books to make sure that they are 100% wide is I am going through and making sure my logo is added to them. Now that's probably going to be well within that bleed area um, on the spine, so I'm actually going to go in and make that a little bit more narrow just because I don't want it to be part that's folded over um, or, or cut off somehow with the spine. So nicer. And I'll be getting into spine design in some of my other videos that I'm doing in this cover series. So don't worry about that. Um, that looks like it's probably gonna be within that, that, that bleed area, so that's good. Okay. So now I just need the title and mine. in a scripty font. It's not going to be the same scripty font, but I think it's going to look pretty good. Uh, there we go. That's what I wanted. better okay I'm going to duplicate this letter okay Okay, so now I have my title, I have my last name, I have my logo, so my spine is set up. So now it is time for me to just make sure that there's copy on the back that advertises the book. I still think that doesn't look great. I want that to be nice and in the middle. Okay. Okay, text box here. Oh, that's too much. I'm just gonna put this in a regular script just because that it's really hard to read that scripty font too much and I think that's probably too big
still think this could be a little bit tinier. To me, I think it looks better. move my head shut down a little bit but I don't want to go too far down here because I know that the um, barcode is going to be down here okay so here I want the same exact text and I'll just do a little blurb about me and why I'm so awesome why people should read all my books I was writing Looks like I didn't misspell my name anywhere. That's exciting. For anybody else who has a last name Williams, or even a first name Williams, you know there's that tendency to put that extra L in there. Okay. I think that looks good. That looks the way that I would like it to look. Could it be prettier? Sure. But the front is really what I'm concerned about. Okay, so I'm going to file save as a Photoshop file. All right, so I've saved the PSD file, and now I just want to export it as a JPEG because I want to have it as that other file type. Beautiful. Okay, so now I want to open that PDF template that I got from Ingram Spark and actually open this over into a new document. Beautiful. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to drop this JPEG of my uh, that I just created and I want to drop it over here on top of these lines. All right, but obviously this is really big and I'm not going to be able to see these lines once I cover them. So I always drop the opacity down. So this is going to allow me to see my work, but I can also see through. So I want to make sure it keeps its dimensions and beautiful. Obviously I can even see here through the blue. Some of my name's going to be cut off, but I knew that from the lines that I created. I can see the lines with the blue you can see everything is going to fit in here. Um, it's not going to get too close. Now this is going to get a little close, but it's still outside of that blue. So I'm okay with that. If I wanted to be really particular, I could go fix it, but um, that's a long word. And so it's going to bump that down. It's not going to look as good. So I'm going to make this a hundred percent now. Beautiful. So I can see that there is that slight edge there. So that is well within the bleed, so I'm okay with that. Okay, so that is the way I want it now. Um, I did go back and fix that little line there. I did not like it. So that is corrected. So now I can go ahead um, and save this and export it as a PDF. So I wanna save as PDF. I'm actually going to say enemies of peace on here, so I'm going to pick the right one. I do want to include the color profile. I know that for Ingram Spark because I've done this approximately a million times. Okay, and that is how you drop your cover art into the Ingram Spark template. So now I can go ahead and pull up this completed item, and as you can see, it is ready for me to upload to Ingram Spark. It has all the information on it that they need. Um, I am not going to be putting my own barcode on it um, just because it's not part of my strategy for this book to try to get it into brick and mortar stores, so I'm not doing that. Okay, and I will be back next week with more information on how you can go ahead and do this for KDP. Stay tuned.
Okay, I hope that was super helpful for you. If you have any questions, please drop them below. I'm not a graphic designer, so if there are some questions I don't know the answer to, I've actually seen a lot of really great interaction from multiple viewers in the comments when I've said, ah! I don't even know what that means um, because I'm not a designer. So um, your question will get answered, whether it's by me or another viewer of this channel. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That way other authors can find this content too. And now you can get back to writing or submitting your book. Mm -hmm.